Well, it is time to start disassembling. The injector pump, as you can see here, has a boatload of leaks. First order is to remove the power steering pump because that's a lot easier for me to get to the actual injector. And then start looking at the viewport of the injector to try and see where it's lined up to and keep track of everything I'm taking apart so that way I can put it back together the same way. Well, I've finally gotten the power steering pump off. Now I'm going ahead, checking on all the gears a little bit, seeing what all's gone on with them, see if there's any extra wear. But especially, I've now got full access to the injection pump. So I'm going to clean it off because all this is all built up grease, grime, and whatever else flew onto the thing during its lifetime. And then, hopefully, be able to take it off and redo it. Well, I've got that cover plate open, and you can see the two markers. That's your timing. If you put on this injector after you rebuilt it and rotated that assembly just a little bit to where once it meshes in with the actual gear, you'd be out of time and it wouldn't run. So that's a pretty needed measurement right there is to see where the timing is set currently as it sits. Well, I've got everything detached. I've been cleaning off the walls with this paint scraper and I've just about removed a pound or so worth of muck and slime and garbage and I'm dropping it all into that little oil pan down there. Same with the catchings from all this stuff dripping. I got too many dirt daubers to worry about just leaving it open air, so might as well stuff it full of shop rags. Well, here we have the pump. I'm going to take this thing apart, but not before I soak it in a good bit of degreaser and try and figure out exactly where some of these leaks might be coming from. For a little bit of education, here's where all the fuel comes in. Goes through the center here. Goes into this chamber right here. Is held. Then is compressed. Pushed through here and pushed out all these tubes into your injectors. And once it gets a certain PSI, it fires that injector because it's breaking the check ball inside of it and letting it spray on through. As you can see, you cannot put on any of these parts internally wrong. They all have a guide, like right there, to where everything snaps together.
Well, that pump looks beautiful, all rebuilt and set in there. Got a new seal, replaced the inline filter inside of there, hooked up all the lines, redid every single seal I could get to except for the front main. I don't have the right tool for that, and I really don't have the time or the money to spend on getting it and waiting for it to show up. However, everything else has been replaced. I had the bleeder shear off inside of that hole, so I had to remove it. And I found out that a grease dirt actually fits in the same place. So I'm going to use that as a semi-bleeder by using a pick to press in the ball of the insert for the grease dirt and try and get some of that air out of there. And hopefully it'll work just as well as one of these bleeders right down here will. So after I get that all kind of prepped and ready, I'll put on the power steering pump again and she'll be ready to see if I can get it to run. Well, it's time test out the new injector pump. I'm just going to roll it around the yard for a little bit and then probably park it back in here and hopefully soon I can do a nice pressure washing job on it. Make it look on the outside just as beautiful as it is to me on the inside. So let's get her started. <laughs> Well, it's been another week. I'm back over with the 990 in its semi-permanent home of this little corridor I cleaned out for it behind my combine shed. And until I can get some more space inside of my actual workshop, this is kind of where it's going to live at. But my seal job is holding strong. Not an ounce of dripping leaks or anything else on my hands. And so now I'm going to test and see if she fires right up. And after that, I'll drive over to my shop again and pressure washer off but currently I'm working on 1206 and the dump truck at the same time as I'm working on this and if you get a little glance in the corner here there's a couple extra little projects that I want to have coming up pretty soon for y'all but I'm just gonna have to squeeze this in alongside those things so why don't we have a nice cold start with the old girl and see if she fires the light <laughs> She's still pretty smoky, but I'll tell you what, I've never been able to get her to idle that low before at this constant of an RPM. That's a win all its own. That might not seem much better to y'all but the mere fact that I can see paint in places I did not see before is very lightning see on the side of the block see paint there see paint all along here I used a little bit of oil out of this reservoir because it was over full to coat the outside of the injector pump I never painted the injector pump. I like the clean metal look, so I'd rather wipe some oil on top of that every once in a while to keep it nice and fresh rather than painting it and worrying about that flaking off over time 
as well as I knocked some of the paint off of the filters so now they're starting to flash rust so I coated them in a little bit of oil on a rag. Overall, highly impressed. Looks great. As you can see, there's hardly any oil whatsoever anywhere. I mean, right here and all along the top of here looks great. I'm going to take these shifters out at some point and clean them up again. I had done it previously but never painted them. I thought my coat of oil would last, but a couple years later it's back to being kind of washy. I do have some spare boots that I can put on each one of them to finally be sure if I left it out in the rain by accident or whatever it wouldn't leak down into the gear case. Well, this is how she's going to be for a little while until I can get some more parts in. I've got a rebuild kit for both the power steering pump and power steering cylinder, as well as a new thermostat coming in in the next couple weeks, I believe. I got the cheap ones off of eBay that I trust wholeheartedly because it's from Reliable Aftermarket Parts, which I'll leave kind of a link in the description to their website. I'm a huge fan of them. It's what I've got most of the parts on this tractor from. And even though there's no sponsorship whatsoever, I just would highly recommend anybody that's looking for parts for pieces of equipment that are not that common to check out their website or check out their eBay page. Very affordable and most of all seem to be very high quality parts. Once I get those parts in, I'll make another episode of rebuilding the cylinder, pump, as well as putting in a new thermostat. And at that point, I will finally be ready to get this thing back in action semi-permanently. Obviously, I've got some more projects that I want to do to it, fixing the lights, paint job, everything like that. But I need to make sure that there's nothing else horribly mechanically wrong with it before I spend that much extra money. It kind of feels like good luck to do so. But as soon as I get those parts in, I have a very special project in mind for this thing to do. That would be using a grader blade on the back to service one of the lanes on my property and hopefully show off a little bit more of the features of this fine piece of machinery. And I must say, as time progresses, I already said that I love this thing to death. I love it even more every time I work on it. So I can't thank you guys enough again for sticking around with me. Right now we're almost at 200 subscribers. And I never thought I'd see the day. But I'm just going to keep on bringing you guys some semi-educational content. Leave some little tidbits of wisdom here and there from experience. And hopefully as time progresses and I get a little bit more into my projects and possibly add on. I've got a lot of letters of interest out there right now on maybe some other projects for the channel. I hope to be more and more knowledgeable about the subjects and present you guys with even better information. So again, I can't thank you all enough and I hope you're all doing great and thank you again for watching. Come back anytime.